Hey everybody, welcome to the Art Workshop. I'm Christopher Epley. We thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, we have a very special show lined up for you. Um, so if you're at home and let's say you want to draw along with us, this is what this show exists for. It exists for you, the viewer, and hopes that you'll engage and draw along if you want to, or if you want to maybe uh, send an image, an image in to us after you've completed something, we'd like to share it and brag about it here on the show. Uh, it is getting warmer out, and with warmer weather, we know that a lot of times families around our region like to go to various locations to cook out, and uh, some of those off the top of my head include uh, Bob Amos Park, you have the City Park in downtown Pipeville, you have the Brakes Interstate Park up near Elkhorn City, there's, um, there's even, um, I think it's called um, Ar Arch Park down in uh, Archer Park, there we go, down in, uh, near, near in Floyd County, so all around, oh, and Millard Fish Trap Dam, that's a great location. So there's tons of uh, areas and different spots that families go to and conjugate to, to so that they cook out and have a good time. And usually when you think of cooking out, there's a few things that come into mind, especially, well, I think of these things anyway. I think of cheeseburgers, I think of hot dogs, I think of all the great foods that accompany a good outing. And I thought, well, since we do a lot of basic art application on the show, but we try to make it fun and entertaining, a lot of times incorporating uh, cartoons and uh, silly comics to, to uh, deliver the application, I thought, well, why not work on a cartoon cheeseburger? And yes, you heard me right, a cartoon cheeseburger. Now, when you think about that off the top of your head, you think, well, okay, um, I think I know about where we're going with this. But um, may maybe you might be surprised once we get started on how we're gonna go about this. Now, for our specific cheeseburger, we're gonna have a lot of layers, so we're not ordering this up any specialties here today. Let's say, you know, uh, cheese and ketchup only, or I don't want pickle on mine. Uh, despite on what you may like on your cheeseburger, today we're gonna be uh, creating ours with, with the works, so everything on it. At least everything I can think of for the drawing, at least. So. Um, I'd like to break it down and show you a little bit about what we're going to be using today because it's always good, I think, to talk about tools. And so we'll take a little look about uh, the tools we're using and how we're going to be using them, okay? Um, there is a really, really specific word that I want to uh, bring up and make sure that everyone knows the meaning behind because it applies to today's application. And in art, there's a word called highlights. Now, with highlights, the word itself is meant to, um, um, when we're talking about laying layers of color, and it's an area or a spot in a drawing, a painting or a photograph, that is strongly illuminated, or it's especially significant or interesting detail or event, and then highlights, of course, for strands of hair that may be highlighted or bleached by coloring. Um, highlight, the definition, really uh, just means areas of specific interest um, that have been purposefully um, drawn, painted, that, that, that stand out, okay? So when you're talking about highlights in art, that's what we're talking about. Now for me, when I think of highlights, I normally think of, of light and shadow, okay? So I'll think of if, if the, a light source is reflecting off, let's say, the sharpener from the top image here, uh, the bright parts of the light that we see that's reflecting, those are the highlights. So that's how I like to think of it. I think from light to dark, shadow and light and those sorts of things. So let's talk a little bit about our tools today. In order for us to understand highlights and how highlights work, we, we're gonna, we've selected a very specific medium for us to work upon, okay? So what we're using is colored pencils. And I love to learn about what artists use uh, when they put their drawings together. And I like to know about tools because I think that's very important. Now I've brought a bunch of colored pencils in today and I've specifically selected these colors that you see because these are the colors of our cheeseburger. Um, but colored pencils is a dry pigment, it's a dry medium, so that means you don't have to apply water to it, of course. And there's different application methods that are used uh, with colored pencils. There's blending, there's layering, there's smudging. Um, there's all sorts of different ways you could go about getting certain effects. Now, we're going to be using a specific type of paper today as well. Um, highlights, like I said, when I think about it, um, I think about light and dark or shadow and um, a light source. Now, we could go about that two different ways. We could go light to dark using the same color. So let me pull these greens out together and show you what I mean. So here I have the color green. But if you look really close, you should be able to tell 
that all four of these colored pencils are a different tone. And we'll talk more about tone in a later episode, but the general idea of tone is that you have the same color, but variations on the density of the color or the, or the tone of the color. So you go from light to dark within a specific range of one color. So we have this light green here, all the way to this dark green, and you can imagine all the colors that we could find in between. But even though we have a ton of colors in between, all of those colors are the color green. Now, that's one way to achieve highlights within a painting or a drawing. The second way to do it is to cheat a little bit. And how we cheat is to go ahead and use the color white. So we can actually apply white on top of whatever color we have to show highlights. Doing it that way is a little less um, um, complicated in terms of trying to achieve the right tone. And, so, you know, it's, it's not as difficult in terms of, of um, application, but it can be just just as challenging though, just trying to be able to get the right tone and right highlight in the right area of your painting. So the type of paper we're using today is a tone paper. Now I encourage always everyone at home to draw along with us. However, I know not all of us have tone paper. If you don't have tone paper at home, there's a way you can get around this today by basically uh, leaving the areas of your paper white. So whenever I start to say this is where we'll put highlights, you leave that area light, okay, or white. Um, if you do have tone paper at home, get a piece of it out because this is what we're going to be using. Now before we actually start drawing our cheeseburger, or even coloring our cheeseburger, I'd like to mention something about um, uh, using your tools in the most efficient way possible. Now if you look, you can see that I have little tiny bits of colored pencil here. They've been using our sharpener. Uh, we've sharpened those down all the way to the point where it's hard to hold now. I think we should be uh, you know, as efficient with our tools as we can. And what I hate to see is students getting down to this point of a colored pencil and tossing it in the garbage because there's still pigment in there. And if you look and compare this to this colored pencil that has hardly been sharpened at all, you can see that that's a, almost a quarter's worth of this pencil that is being thrown away, okay? Two of these would be a half. So if you were to throw two pencils away at this size, you've basically thrown away half a colored pencil. You throw four of these away, you might as well toss a brand new one in the garbage, in my opinion, okay? So there's a tool you can invest in that will help you maximize every little bit of pigment out of your colored pencil, and it's called an extender. The extenders are not that expensive. There's different brands. You can find all of these tools we're talking about at your local hobby store or your arts and crafts section of any large store. Now these extenders work in a way that you can Im almost, um, almost imagine. You take the piece of pencil that is down to the point where it's hard to hold on to it and you stick that in the end and then you push the clamp down so that it's nice and secure. It doesn't pop out real easy. At this point what you can do, you can use the rest of the pigment easily by holding on to the extender instead of the small tip. You can also sharpen it all the way to the point where there's almost nothing left of your color pencil. Now those of you at home that are cost efficient and you want to you know save money where you can and not be wasteful, the extender is a wonderful investment. Okay? Let's talk a little bit now about our drawing. Now like I said we're going to be drawing a cartoon cheeseburger. Now you may think to yourself, how do we learn anything about art application by drawing a cartoon cheeseburger? Well, don't start drawing at home, but I want you to just pay attention to this first. The first element we're going to be learning today is about perspective. We've talked about this in great detail in the past. So I'm just going to draw one of the elements of our cheeseburger up here at the top. This is going to be the top bun. So you, with a bun that goes on, you know, cheeseburger, there's a top and bottom, okay? So I'm going to draw my little sesame seeds on here a little bit and uh, so this is our top bun of our cheeseburger. Perspective basically if, uh, broken down and we'll, we'll cover this more in depth and use it as one of our keywords later on in another episode uh, but perspective is what you can see and how you see it from the uh, angle that you're looking at at something at okay so so we see distance we may see depth we may see all these elements um, of, of whatever it is we're looking at um, from where you're looking at it. So if you're, let's say you're drawing something and you're going to use perspective, um, you're going to see things vanish and out into the distance where you can no longer see it with the naked eye or you're going to see 
uh, elements of something really, really close up so they look larger. Uh, perspective plays with your eye a little bit. So if you see things far away look smaller and things closer up look large, well, that's different elements of perspective. What I'm doing here, I'm sketching all of our ingredients out just while I'm talking. So as you can see, what I've done, here's the bun. I've got some, uh, a few uh, pickles here. I've got some tomatoes. Here's some onion. I'll put a piece of cheese on here. We could put some, uh, we'll make our cheese Swiss cheese. So let's say our cheese has these uh, holes in them. So we can add those onto our drawing. This is what we're going to be messing with today. We're going to be taking all these messy ingredients and putting them together to create a cheeseburger. Of course, we have our uh, meat at the bottom like this. And then we have, of course, if you want lettuce, that's fine too. We'll have that at the bottom, wavy lettuce all the way at the bottom, and then our bottom bun. All of these sketches that I've just done pretty fast here just to show you the elements of perspective. We're going to be messing with all these ingredients, putting them together, and forming our cartoon cheeseburger. The second thing we're going to be drawing today, we're going to be making our cheeseburger animated in a sense by giving it um, eyes. So we're going to have two eyes at the top of our cheeseburger, and then we have to put some pupils in there. And so you can, you can really um, customize your drawing at home by drawing large pupils, small pupils, whatever it is that you want. You can there's variations on all sorts of ways to draw eyes. There's no one set way to do it. Um, you can show emotion with how you draw eyes. So you can make your, you're just adding a couple lines. You can go from excited to worried uh, by basically um, closing your eyes and squinting them a little bit and adding a few tears out here. You can have your character very, very happy. And then reversing that could make your character sad. So all of these elements our elements we're going to be using. So let's get started. Of course, I'm drawing on toned paper again, and I'm going to actually be drawing this out with the black colored pencil, okay? The first thing that I'm going to do, and you can do this at home, follow along with me now, is draw an oval. So make sure you, you uh, come as close as you can to an oval. This will be the first eye. Now we're going to draw a second oval with this one a little smaller, I'm going to show that there's some variation in how the eyes are drawn. That adds more character to a cartoon drawing. Once you have these two ovals, you can go ahead if you want and put a pupil in there. What I'm doing is I basically wrote the letter C and then again, smaller this time, the letter C again, okay? Once you've written the letter C, you can make it look like a moon by just drawing a line coming down and connecting with the other point of the letter C. You can do this on this one as well. Now I'm going to leave those pupils where they are for now. I want to come back and I want to put more detail in at the very end, okay? Now once you have their eye, your eyes drawn, you can start now working on the ingredients of your cheeseburger. The first ingredient going to be the bun. Starting at the top, come over to the side of your oval and draw a line coming out. And notice it bends a little bit. So on this side too, this line needs to come out and bend downward. Now here's where we're going to start working with perspective a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to draw our bun coming down. Keep going with your line on each side. Okay. And then you're going to draw a, a line going straight across the top connecting those two lines. You can notice that my line's a little crooked. That's okay. Um, with cartoons, it's an exaggeration of real life uh, circumstances and um, areas of interest, whatever it is we're drawing. It's, it's exaggeration. So it's okay that we play around and make things a little um, uh, different or not so uh, perfect when it comes to our lines, okay? Have fun. Art is supposed to be fun. The next thing we're going to do now is work on our pickles. So what you're going to do is come over to the edge and you're going to draw these wavy lines. See what I'm doing? I'm drawing these wavy lines going all the way out and in. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing here. More wavy lines. Now remember when I talked about perspective earlier, this is where our application of um, using the correct uh, method of laying our lines down helped to build perspective. So a pickle, if you were to see a pickle cut in halves, there's an edge on there, right? So let's be sure and 
add the secondary line to follow all the way around our edge of our pickle to show uh, a little bit of thickness. It looks like a, it looks it's 3D instead of 2D, and it helps with perspective later. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on our onions. So coming over here again, you're going to draw this almost like a half an oval coming down and up right underneath our pickle. Come over here, start again, down, up, coming up other side of the pickle. And now we're going to draw a parallel line coming down, following the same line you just drew up in. And the same thing over here, you're going to start here and pull your line down and bring it up and back in. So now we have pickles and we have um, onions. Inside of our pickles, if you want, you can add a few of these little straight lines coming across. This helps to uh, show that like there's been a cut or a blade has run across it, the grooves of a pickle. Okay. Now we're going to work on our lettuce. Now for our lettuce, we use a lot of wavy lines. Okay. So you're going to come down and you're going to start working with these wavy lines. Lettuce is sometimes wavy, sometimes it's shredded. There's all these variations. So just these wavy lines all the way across our cheeseburger. Okay, and we, we want to remember, be very loose with your lines, have fun. You don't have to be, it doesn't have to be perfectly um, uh, exactly like mine, but come as close as you can and just have fun. Do your own, ver your own version of our cheeseburger. Now we're going to do tomatoes. So coming down at the edge, come over this side a little bit. You're going to draw this line coming down all the way up and back in. And the same thing over here, down, across, back in. Now we want to show perspective, so we're going to have to add another line coming right underneath the line we just finished on each side. It shows a little bit of thickness of our tomato. Now, if you notice, there's not a whole lot of difference between our tomato and our onion rings right now, but when we add color, it'll really stand out. Now we're going to work on the cheese. Now, we could draw cheese in all variations. You could draw melted cheese, you could have cheese dripping off of it, or you can have cheese laying on the meat. Purpose of our drawing, we're going to have cheese just laying there, so we're going to draw what looks like half of a, uh, um, a box or almost a right triangle. So it comes down and back in, almost like the letter L. Do the same thing here. It looks like half of a triangle or triangle without the bottom. And then over on the side, you can barely see a little bit more of the cheese hanging off the meat. Speaking of the meat, we can work on that now. Come over to the edge and you're going to draw this line that comes down and it's going to go all the way across your entire drawing over to the edge and bring it back up in. This will eventually be our meat or our cheeseburger. Now we have to lay the bottom bun. Before we do that I want to put a little bit of ketchup and mustard too. So here's where you can have a little fun. I always like to put my mustard and ketchup laying on the bottom part of my bun. Some folks may look, want to put their mustard and ketchup on the cheese. I, it's up to you, but for the purpose of our uh, of our drawing, we're going to we're going to put it on the bottom of the bun. Now we're going to draw the bottom bun. So that means you have to draw a line coming down on each side, so you know where to begin and end. And you're going to draw a line coming all the way across your cheeseburger, finishing up right at the edge. So we have a cartoon cheeseburger. If you want to give yours some, a little bit of some eyebrows, you can do that. Now we have to go back in and put color. So how we're going to apply color with our color pencil is starting up now. So if you have color pencils at home, that's great. You want to use those. If you don't have color pencil at home, that's okay too. Um, if you have crayons, you could use that. Um, there's all different applications of dry medium that you could use. Dry medium meaning anything It's not like watercolor or acrylic paints or oil paints. But we're going to start out at the top, and I'm going to use this off-color. It, it's actually a, uh, it's called goldenrod, but it's a, it's more of a uh, light orange color. And I'm going to go all the way around the edge of my top bun. Now, when you're working with colored pencils, a good idea is to go light to dark if you want to blend. All right, so we want to imagine where our light source is because we want to know what's going to be highlighted. That's our key word, remember? So we're going to pretend that our light source is coming down from up here, okay? So leave this area blank. I'm going to come down at the bottom and work on the bottom bun. I'm going to go all the way across with this color at the bottom. 
Now, once you have that, you can go back into your drawing again, but yet this time you're going to put a little bit lighter color. So this is actually going to blend around the edges. And remember earlier I said go light to dark, but we went reverse starting out with our bun. The purpose, the reason I did that was to let those at home that do not have toned paper know where uh, to leave uh, the areas white, okay? From now on though, we're gonna be going light from dark, but with areas that I highlight, remember at home, you can get the same effect if you don't have toned paper by leaving those areas blank, okay? Now I'm blending all around the edges. I'm actually coloring over top of that color that I first put down. If you have crayons, you can do it with crayons. Doesn't matter, I'm going all the way across that. Now I want this bun to be a little more, um, um, uh, uh, the tone to have a little more darkness in it, a little more shadow. So I'm gonna color over top of the color I just used all around the edges, okay? going up to the eye, very lightly pressing down this time. This is where the highlights will be later, all around the top, okay? Same thing for the bottom. I'm going to blend that in, going all the way across the bottom of our bottom bun, okay? Now, let's go back up and let's start to work with our ingredients more. The first ingredient we're going to work with is our pickles. I'm going to take the lightest color that I have and I'm going to go in and I'm going to color all of the entire area of the pickle. So that means the top that we drew first and then I'm going to work on the uh, edges that we added uh, next, okay? So I'm actually going to color all the area in for the pickle. Now how you make the pickle stand out with perspe perspective again, you can actually use color to show perspective. And what you'll do is go back in and you're going to add a second color green. This is a little darker than the first and you're going to go around all of the grooves that we added inside of our pickle. We're going to put this darker color inside of the grooves all around the pickle. So it should look a little more like, like a pickle or slices of pickles, dill pickles, now that we did that. Now we have our onion to contend with. I'm using this beige color for the onion because really onions are usually white but I don't want to add the highlights in just yet. That's going to come at the very end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this beige color just to color in the area so you know where the pick, where the onions are. It looks white on the, on the, actual, on the screen, but um, it's actually a beige color, okay? Now we have to work with our lettuce. Now, the color that I originally used first with the pickles, I want to stay away from it because we have green on green here. That can be really confusing and it can start to actually overlap. I'm going to go in very lightly with this uh, mid mid-tone green color and I'm going to color in. If you have a uh, green at home and you have shades of green, let's say with crayons, um, you can use any color that's not the colors you used first, not the tones of green you used first, but you need to just press down lightly, okay? The key is to just have this look a little different than the pickles. I'm not pressing down hard at all. I'm just going over the entire area of where the lettuce would be, okay? Now, I'm gonna go back in, okay? Again, using a, another uh, tone of green. And this time, I'm going to be coloring in the grooves of where our lettuce goes into the bun. So, the lettuce goes up underneath the bun, it goes up underneath the pickles, and I wanna to try to show that by using color. Pressing down a little harder this time, because I want to be able to see that there's different tones in this green, okay? Over here on the edge, I'm going down this one, down these grooves, making sure that I get all those areas up underneath the bun colored in really nice and well. Now I'm gonna use a third tone of green, this one being darker, and again, this is where you go in and you go up underneath the bun more, up underneath the pickles, where all the lettuces snug and tucked up underneath that bun, we want to make sure and uh, have this area darkened in just a little bit more. The next color we're going to be working with is going to be red. It's for our tomatoes. Now, just as I suggested at the beginning, you go light to dark. So pick out a light tone of red and color the entire area of your tomato. Go all the way across. It's okay. We, we can color in the areas that we'll be uh, using a separate tone on later. It's not a big deal. We just wanna make sure all that area is nice and colored in. 
All right, so now we have all the area colored in. I'm going to go back and I'm going to use a different tone of red. And I'm going to go around the edges of our tomato. This time, be where the, where the actual skin of the tomato would be when you cut it. I'm going to just color in those lines that we created, those parallel lines, so that it actually starts to look as if, though, this is the skin of the tomato. Okay? There we go. So now you can see how these two tones play off one another. This is lighter, this is darker. It adds a perspective. We can see this is edges of something, and this is the other surface that is up underneath the, uh, the, the lettuce. Now we're going to work on the cheese. Now, with the cheese, we're going to use two different types of yellow and an orange. Okay? The orange that we use for the bun, that sort of color. And then we're using, as you can see, two types of yellow here. Maybe you can pick that up, but one's brighter than the other. Remember going light to dark, we're going to use the lightest color that we have first for the cheese. So I'm going all around, making sure I color in all of the areas that we've drawn in that are supposed to be the parts of the cheeseburger that are the cheese. Okay? And you can see from your screen how this is starting to look more like a cheeseburger now since we're using um, all these different colors. We've got green, we've got red, we've got brown, we've got um, orange, we have yellow. All these colors help to combine to look more like our cheeseburger. Now that I have that first color of yellow, or first tone of yellow, I should say, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to start to add a second tone of yellow, this time up underneath the area of the cheese that would be tucked up underneath the uh, tomatoes. And then a third, which is more of an orange, very lightly to color up underneath there again, the area of the cheese that's up underneath the rest of the ingredients. We're going to color that in with our orange. Pressing down, not really hard. We want that to be um, left a little light. Now we have our meat. Now for our meat, we're going to use brown. We're going to use two different colors of brown, two different tones. I keep wanting to say color. Technically, they are several different colors, but two different tones of brown, a light and a dark. So grab a light first, go in and very lightly color in all of the area where our meat would be. So if you have a crayons at home, you can choose a light colored brown, a light tone of brown, and you can color this all across your surface of where your meat would be. Once we've done that, we want to go back in, make sure you go all the way to your edges, all of that colored in. Now we can go back in, okay, with the darker brown, and we can actually go up underneath the bun now and start to add uh, color in all the areas that's up underneath the rest of our ingredients, just like we've done previously with our other uh, tones of color. You can see how that starts to look like it's uh, a little bit of shadow in there. We also have to think about the bottom of the, the meat here, so we'll darken this area in as well. All the way across the bottom and the top. Now once we have that, this is where we can actually put some red in again for our ketchup tomato. So I'm going to have ketchup on the sides here. I said a ketchup and tomato. Ketchup and mustard. And uh, I may just uh, go along and just do ketchup all across mine. I like how that red is, is uh, interacting with the other red that I've drawn. Now what we've come to be uh, working up towards the entire drawing is our highlights. We're going to go through this pretty fast. Basically all of the areas that we've kept light or lighter will add the white to. So of course we're going to color our eyes in. So the cartoon cheeseburger has these giant eyes. We want that to be nice and colored in. Go across all of the surface. All right, and then of course the second eye here now, for adding highlights to our actual cheeseburger, go up to the top and you can actually start to put a little bit of white in where the light would be reflecting on our cheeseburger. Using highlights with art in the different mediums is so fun to do. And there's so many different ways to apply medium um, to get that effect. Uh, later on in our workshops, you're going to be seeing different methods. Some of this is going to be using acrylic paint, watercolor, um, even with graphite, colored pencil again. 
we're going to be using all these different mediums to show you all the different ways to get effects of highlights, get effects of perspective, all basic art applications. So if you enjoy art, you really need to tune into the show as much as you can. If you see it coming up on the schedule, be sure and uh, watch, draw along with me. We've shown some student artwork here just recently on the show. So please send in your work. You can email me um, your work directly and I'll be sure to bring it into the show. Um, my email address is uh, eplingillustrations at gmail.com. So those of you that have artwork you'd like to share, share and show off, I'd love to, love to see it. So you see what I've done here. I went across the entire image, uh, of course, using uh, uh, the highlights. If you want to go ahead and trace your own lines that you created in the, in the beginning with black now, those highlights will really stand out. I really hope you've enjoyed today's show. I hope that uh, you, you um, have learned a little bit about highlights and then, of course, with perspective as well. Um, I hope that you'll tune in again and uh, see all the different uh, variety of, of um, basic art application shows that we'll have for you here on the Art Workshop. We're going to try our best to offer a wide variety, things connected to our region or times of the year or events or different uh, special occasions, even history. Uh, not too long ago, we, we uh, did a cartoon version of Zebulon Pike, who is uh, the gentleman that Pikeville and Pike County is named after. So we tie in art with our show along with all these elements connected to our region. Be sure and always sign your work. That's something we probably need to stress more. Of course, sesame seeds, we'll have those in there as well. So there's our cartoon cheeseburger who is ready uh, for spring and summer to happen. And I know you are too, as well as I am. So thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Highlights are wonderful to show in art. You can pull different effects and get so many different, nice, uh, amazing uh, things to come out of your work while using highlights. So thank you again for tuning in. I um, hope you've enjoyed it. Until next time, I'm Christopher Epling, and keep drawing.